I live in this land for a few weeks now with a few other people and one of the things I enjoy a lot is discovering what kind of wild edible plants already live here. What kind of plants I can just grab and eat. And I don't know if you see it already, but right under this pine there is a lot of interesting mushrooms. Let's take a closer look. These mushrooms live together in a beautiful circle at the base of this pine. It's actually very impressive. You can see that the circle, while not perfect, is not far from perfect. And there are so many of them. They are harder to see when they hide in the grass. So this mushroom is called whipping bolet or bolet granulé in French. So the problem with mushrooms is always how to identify them. Let's do that in three parts with this one. The first part is where does the mushroom grow? And as you can see, this mushroom grows in a perfect circle around the pine. And whipping bullet does exactly that. It grows only under pines. So that is the first step completed. It's easy. Now the harder part, the visual identification. So the first thing to note is that this mushroom does not have gills, it has pores, so it's probably some kind of bullet. It's way easier to identify mushrooms with pores than with gills. They are very few mushrooms with pores, and like most of them are edible. Uh, not a lot of them are dangerous. So some kind of bullet. bullet. Then what I do is that I just take my mushroom guide and I try to see what looks like it. And this one, you can see that the stem has no ring. You can identify the color uh, of the stem, of the top of the cap. Oh, and good to know that the mushrooms, they change quickly with age. And yesterday, this mushroom, the cap was sticky. But today it's not. Stickiness is uh, an element of whipping bullets. But right now, right now it's not sticky. So, yeah, you can easily be tricked. The next part of the identification, the last part, is that the skin of the cap is very easy to remove in this variety of mushroom. So let's see if this skin is easy to remove. Oh, and by the way, it's way better to remove the skin on this mushroom because this is, this is what can make some people sick. Anyway, this mushroom can still make some people sick. So the first time you eat it, you should probably eat it in very limited quantity and when I ate it the last time I had no problem so this time I will, I will eat a bigger quantity so the skin very easy to remove and already I can tell that this mushroom is older than yesterday it's darker it's firmer it's always better to eat mushrooms when they are young. So I will harvest some of these mushrooms to make an omelette for my lunch, a mushroom omelette. But just before, I want to show you another place where they live. So we can show another shape they can take as a group of mushrooms. Here we are a little bit further in the garden. And you can see here there are another few pines. Nothing under this one, but as I continue to walk, let's see, I think these ones are a bit more hidden in the grass. Oh, just right here. Do you see? Yesterday, I stepped on them because I didn't see them first. Pretty hidden, right? And this is how you can walk just near them and don't see them. There are so many things to eat that just grow and it's so easy to miss them. I think there are still a lot more here. Oh yeah, these ones are hurt because I stepped on them yesterday. 
And for mushrooms, you have to be very quick. They go bad very quickly. In just a few days, they can, they can change from a young, beautiful mushroom to an old, disgusting mushroom. And further in the garden, there are still some other varieties of mushrooms and other varieties of wild edible plants. I still have a lot more to discover. Now let's go back to the harvest and then to the kitchen. Oh, this one, they are getting old very, very quickly. I think I will just go into grass. They are probably in a better shape in the grass. Ah, these ones, they are beautiful. Very, very clean. I love the beauty of this life that just grows by itself. Okay, I could harvest more, but I think it would be enough. Let's go to the kitchen now. So here in the kitchen, as you can see, I take out the pores, most of the pores, and the skin at the top of the cap because I believe these are the parts that tend to make um, people sick and I keep, for the most part, only the flesh of the mushroom. And I still have some more to go through. And this is what it looks like. A lot of mushroom flesh. It will go into the pan very shortly. And here is the final product. I tasted it and I can tell you that, yeah, it's pretty good. After lunch, I'm back with the mushrooms. The omelette was very good, my friend loved it. And as you can see, there are still a lot of these mushrooms. This is a good thing. Sometimes you see wild edible mushrooms, but you see maybe one or two or three, it's not much food. Here, here, you can make omelettes for many people. And now that I have this piece of land, like, I'm so excited to discover all the white plants and I started the vegetable garden a few weeks ago and it's already giving me food. So yeah, I hope I will be able to make some more interesting things. Anyway, thanks for watching.